Hello lovelies. Today we have letters of a Portuguese nun. This is a 2014 French language art film and I think this one was very interesting and very unique. It's This is presented as an actress who is enacting letters written by a nun named Mariana who is a Portuguese nun. So we open in modern day where the actress arrives. She's wearing present-day clothing. She arrives at a monastery and then change o changes over to period piece clothing. And to a degree, it's kind of presented as a, a one-act play. For the bulk of the film, we have various scenes of her on the monastery ground grounds reading uh, or enacting these letters and just very romantic love letters, you know, a woman who has fallen in love with a French lieutenant. And of course, he has been sent off to war. They cannot be together, so she's writing these very emotional letters to this man. And throughout the course of the film, because these are very long and, and detailed letters, and we just discover that this man has been receiving the letters, but he's just tucking them away. He's not really answering or responding, basically just, as one would say, throwing her to the wolves or just ignoring her. And we see how she goes through the stages of love, the, you know, the young girlish puppy love, the serious enamored love, the, the hurt, the despair, and especially for a person who's going through their own touch of melancholy. I imagine that you can relate to this immensely and as an emotional being who can't relate, we've all been there. And what I really like about this is eventually we do get a glimpse of this this captain fellow. It kind of looks like an enactment. Eventually he shows up at the convent and she's telling him all this stuff and he isn't saying a single word. We realize that this is just, she's imagining that she's speaking to him. He isn't actually physically there. He hasn't shown up to to take her away and he hasn't finally shown up just to be with her. No, he's still on his ship doing his own la-di-da, whatever thing. And so she goes through her own phases, of course. Eventually, in her final letters, she says to him that she's just not going to look for him anymore. She returns the bracelets and gifts that he had given to her, but not before she says her piece. Which, of course, especially being a nun, we, we kind of get where this is going, especially coming from a strong religious background, or even a, you know, the whole one is to remain chaste for for marriage and so on and so forth and I, I gave myself to you and you, you took a very personal part of me and you you took that for granted. It, it's not a plaything, I'm not a toy and so on and so forth. I'm, I'm paraphrasing here of course but I don't know, I, I think the writing was really good. Another one of the things that I noticed about this film which I thought was pretty interesting is there are a lot of blues, a lot of whites, a lot of greens and Considering that she is in a convent, I imagine these words or these words so these colors are symbolic. So of course, blue being loyalty, white, purity, green, tranquility, which to me makes sense. And her her attire does adjust by by color over time. I'm not too familiar with with any sort of an order, so I can't really speculate if it's due to season or for any any particular reason or if it's just artistic license. On that, I, I just really wouldn't know. I, I, I mean, for those of you who are in the know, please help me fill in the gaps. I'd really love to have that extra bit of knowledge there, but we we pretty do we pretty do much end where she just decides to just make her life on her own and move on as she had been, and uh, which is why I des describe it as a Oh, a one-woman play. So it's it's very, in a sense, avant-garde. It's it's a cinematic film presented as a one-person play, if that makes any sense. And what I like in this is towards the end of the film, it's implied that these two characters were actual persons. The it it's stated that the the letters were translated by a certain someone when in actuality the the person who was the supposed translator was the 
the person who actually wrote these, the, the fictitious letters themselves. So that was very interesting. It, it definitely caught my interest and a lot of why they were so well received at the time was because people perceived them to be actual letters even though they were, uh, I guess you could say, somewhat written in a, a novelized form. So eventually this style of writing, which, which was developed into the, the sentimental novel, is, is what it was called, and it did become a movement itself, but you have this story of a, a nun who fell in love with a French lieutenant, and it's, to me, very obvious, uh, those of you who are familiar with medieval studies, the, the story of Heloise and Abelard, who were the, the actual nun and monk lovers who were in love with one another and did actually exchange letters which were translated and published numerous times over. And I think this little fictitious story was to a degree inspired by them, which of course, I mean, it, it's, a, it's a very lovely sentiment to have a, a woman of the cloth, because she is a woman, we all have emotions, to fall in love with a man. And unfortunately, she was led on and she didn't have to too happy an ending, but I I feel that the the story was was borrowed to a degree or drew allusion to, but I don't know. I, I thought it was a very lovely story. It once again I, I describe it as being just very very artistic, but um yeah it's it's a very much a talking head film, but if you have an appreciation for foreign film or art films Please share your thoughts with this on me. I, I know there is a, a similar film out there, which is, pardon me, which is actually an exploitation film called Love Letters of a Portuguese Nun, which maybe to some degree may have been <laughs> inspired by these original fictitious letters as well. I don't know, but we will eventually take a look at that film as well. But... As always, that is all I have for you guys for today, and I will talk to you later.